It's your daily dose of Donna. We have made it to Friday. It's Friday, Friday, March 8th. Oh, cannot tell you how happy I am that it is Friday. We have such an epic, huge show for you guys today. The most, literally, I can't think of a better finale to an incredible jam-packed, like, epic season of The Traders. We wrapped up Real Housewives of Miami with some song. And we finally got back into my favorite house, and that's the Hamptons house, to learn more about, you know, what's going on with Carl and Lindsay. We have a huge show today. Make sure to comment below, subscribe. Thank you so much for being here. This is Daily Dose of Donna. I'm back. Okay, you guys, I love that you love that intro. I had a lot of fun creating it and just throwing it on there. And then so many of you guys liked it and you're like, don't change it. So if you watch the YouTube version, YouTube version, you'll see that there's some clips of me before I had this background, this um, you know, jungle situation. Um, my hair was long. It makes me start to say, like, now I need long hair. Do you guys have this hair envy thing? And I don't know if this is just a woman thing. Maybe this is a man thing too. If you go through a lot of different hairstyles. If I if I have long hair, I miss having short hair. If I have short hair, I miss having long hair. When I'm when I have long hair and I look at pictures of me with short hair, I say, "Oh my god, that's so cute." But when I have short hair and I look at pictures, I want long hair. You know what? Thank you for reminding Wanda. It is International Women's Day and this is a part of being a woman is struggling with your hair. And I really wish I had some sort of like amazing gar Garnice sponsor for today because that would have been a great tie in. But honestly, it's International Women's Day. And who else to celebrate today but the women, the women and honestly, such epic women to talk about today. Like Phaedra, of course, MJ, like what happened last night was crazy. We are going to get into that. I'm going to talk a little bit also about a couple of other things. I'm really glad that there isn't some really big entertainment news today because I need to hang out with you guys just like going over TV. That's kind of all I have time for today. Now, before we get into the show, I have to uh, mention the sponsor of today's show, of this week's show, and that is better help. And you guys were finally on the precipice, the precipice of Daylight Savings, which is going to be on Sunday, March 10th, the day of the Oscars. Are you guys going to be watching the Academy Awards? Now, if you had an extra hour of your day, every day, what would you do? Would you learn opera like Julia? Would you consider opening a sober sports bar like Carl? Would you get into dog walking like Amanda? What exactly would you do with that extra hour? It needs to be something that makes you happy. And if you can't figure that out on your own, you may want to consider going to therapy because therapists actually really help you kind of find your purpose in life, your plan, your path. You know, where should you, what, what should you do next? So if you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, which we're all always online. We're so, we're so cool. We're always in touch with the online world. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a li licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Donna. That's D-A-N-A -A, today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Donna. Michelle says, I am still unwell from traders. I may need therapy. Sister, you're not alone. Happy International Women's Day to you, sister. We have all gone through this. And Wanda has to say, sue Andy, Bravo, Peacock, NBC, everyone, just sue, sue the world. I'm I'm going to sue Ekin Sue for shoving her boobs in my face all night last night. Did you guys notice how well placed her gorgeous uh bodice was right behind? CT's face every time they film CT and Trishel. And I thought to it, like, I thought about this for a second. I was like, I mean, I'm jealous. I love, I think I can see stunning. Oh, Jesus, Lord, no, I can see. What was it? Oh, Lord, no, not I can see. Um, it was such 
a good couple hours of TV. Before we get into it, we have to talk about a Love is Blind situation, guys. The trailer for the re- for the Love is Blind um, reunion just came out. Have you guys seen it? It looks really good. It looks really, um, I should say, like spicy. Like we're going to get all of the, um, you know, drama. Because as you guys know, like so much happened behind the scenes of this year's Love is Blind with everyone having an ex. So everyone having like something else in the background. And I don't know. I think this is going to be good. I think you guys, let's watch the trailer together. How about that? And for those of you listening on audio, you can just imagine, just imagine Chelsea's lips. Just imagine Jeremy. Just imagine um, Sarah Ann and her obnoxious behavior. Just imagine Clay. Okay, just imagine it all. And I think we should all be watching this together. Season of Love is Blind has given us real connections. Real heartbreak. She's honestly loving my life and I did make a mistake. And real questions. I've never stayed up till 5 a.m. just chatting. I'm a pick me girl. You're the pick me girl. You're a clown. The reunion with surprise guests you won't want to miss. Were condoms not an option? <laughs> Jaw-dropping confrontations. I thought we were on good terms, but I guess we're not. Then every single scandal. <laughs> Unbeknownst to her, you have someone on the outside. <gasps> I'd like to hear what you have to say. Um, I have nothing to say. Watch together March 13th at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on Netflix. All right, you guys. This season of Love is Blind. That means it is going to be live at 6 p.m. on March 13th, 9 p.m. if you're on the East Coast, 6 p.m. here. Let me check my calendar because I'm not joking what I think I want to do on that day. And this is actually kind of fun. A couple people in our Facebook group. Let's see. What do I have? No. I have a school show to go to. My kids are performing in a show from 6 to 7.30. Maybe I choose Love is Blind over my kids. I mean, serious question. Jessica chose Love is Blind over going to her kid, hanging out with her daughter. Just kidding. I would never do that for all of you guys that are haters out there. I am a mom first, a prime, like that is my number one goal in life. So I go, I'll see my mom, I'll see my kids. I'll be a mom and then I'll come home and watch it later. I was going to say we could do a watch party, but maybe if you guys are down to do it a little bit later, we can do it later. Anyway, um, it's going to be on next Wednesday. It looks so good. If you guys remember, Trevor had a little bit of drama because that that's Trevor, the guy that looks like a Pixar character, like Gaston. He or he really honestly looks like Gaston. He should be in Little Mermaid. Um, no, that's that's not Little Mermaid, Donna. That's Beauty and the Beast. Get your Disney straight, okay? Anyway, he is... Um, he is, hey, he has all this drama, this girl that he used to be in like a full-on relationship with. I'm so confused with this. This feels so crazy. I guess it's this woman that he had this relationship with and said, I'm going to go on Love is Blind just to be on a reality show and like get followers or whatever. And she was down. She was like open for it. She's like, yeah, go do it. And then only later when she started to watch the show and realize how like intense and obsessed he was with Chelsea in it, where I guess now she's coming out and, you know, sharing all the secrets. I don't know, you guys. The point is, as Zach Peter said yesterday on his show, he said, everyone take notes. And I did. I took notes. Okay. I'm going to show you guys my notes from yesterday's show. This was, <laughs> I have to write them first, but this was Zach Peter's note on his show yesterday. It says, don't trust men. I'm looking at you, men. On International Women's Day, I only trust those women and not men. Just kidding. I'm not like that. I'm not a man hater. But I do say, um, you know, probably Katie Maloney is like running the campaign of don't trust men. Katie Maloney probably has don't trust men somewhere tattooed on her body, don't you think? And Erica Jane, because we we watched that on Bet It All on Blonde, that Erica Jane has like issues with men. A couple little um, 
Oh, another love is blind thing. Chelsea, Chelsea and Jimmy were spotted together, you guys. They have been posting Instagram stories very vaguely, not tagging each other and not posting each other, just posting from the exact same location at the exact same time with the exact same background. I mean, what are we doing? So they're hanging out together in Florida. Chelsea and Jimmy. Jimmy, run. So just jump right into that water. Go far. Go far in that water. Okay? Um, Amy Phillips cracked me up because she posted something like a little reel of her doing like role play and being Chelsea and Jimmy in that last conversation. The whole time she had a frown on. Um, another little piece of homework, you guys. I was on Ryan Bailey's show today, So Bad It's Good. My friend Ryan, he was on my show, I think, last week or two weeks ago. And I was on his show yesterday. Well, we recorded it yesterday. It aired today. We talk about Real Houses of Beverly Hills. We, of course, talk a little more about Vanderpump Rules. We talk about something about nothing. I mean, something about her. We talk about all kinds of things. So make sure to go over and listen to Ryan's show. I just love, love, love him. Um, now we got to get into last night, right? I'm going to start on the traders because I, I I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm doing traders, real houses in Miami, summer house. Okay. I really hope you guys stick around for the whole show. Oh, before I get into traders, I want to remind you that we are doing a Patreon only YouTube today at 1 PM. So like right after this show, Maybe a couple minutes later, we're going to jump into the Patreon only YouTube. So that's just for members. You have to obviously, um, it's a $5 a month is the tier. And you can come in and we can talk all kinds of things. It'll be really fun. Okay, let's chat traders. Obviously, this is appointment television at its best. I have not seen a show like Traders in a long time where people, I mean, maybe it's like people are doing this with The Bachelor, Golden Bachelor, but even Golden Bachelor, like I would wait until later and then fast forward through half the show or whatever. But for for some reason with Traders, and I don't know if it's, I'm so scared to get it spoiled, 6 p.m. on the dot, East Coast, I mean, Pacific time on Thursdays, it airs. I'm like, stop what you're doing. Kids, put your homework away get out of that shower. Like do, stop eating. Traders is on. I put traders above everything in my life. Now I love the show and I think they've done such a phenomenal job. I loved season one, but season two has a hundred percent captured my attention more. I love that it's all reality stars. I love the difference of the like genre of reality. So you've got the survivor girls, you've got the big brother people, you've got the Bravo ladies, you've got, um, the challenge, um, MTV peeps. And then of course you have Deontay and John like, Oh, peppermint from RuPaul. But other than that, isn't Deontay and John, aren't Deontay and John so random? They're the two that aren't on reality shows or have never been on reality shows from what I know. So I always find them like so, especially John. Like Deontay is at least, you know, like a heavyweight champ. Who's like, what's happening here? Now, John did really, he wanted to get MVP last night because John spoke so much during the the reunion that I was like, someone's got to turn off John's mic. Like John was piping in at every possible chance he had. Did you guys not like feel that? John was like giving Dory last night. Okay. The finale starts. And of course we have the final, you know, day, the final morning and everyone comes to breakfast and we find out sadly that Sheree has left the building. Sheree, who I actually really think is so funny, um, and I really enjoyed watching her not know what she was doing this season on the traders, but she got murdered and I think it was a good move for Kate. I think it definitely helped get the energy off of Kate. Here's something that I, that bothered me tremendously. And I don't know if any of you guys felt this way at the beginning of the episode when they were having that final breakfast, which by the way, I heard a rumor that that breakfast is not in the castle. That breakfast is a set. It's a set. If I am wrong, please tell me. But someone told me that or a podcast told me that. I am so mad about it. Um, Because I thought, oh, what a beautiful room this is. Doesn't it feel like it should be a real room? I don't know. Maybe it's not a set. 
definitely the backdrop is a set, like the window, because there's no way that it's like always just so beautiful and perfect and you don't see one crew member back there. They have this final breakfast. MJ sits down first and Lance made me laugh so hard last night because every time someone knocks, MJ's like, come in. And Lance is like, who's going to tell her? Like, who's going to tell her you don't have to say come in? But she does that. Then CT comes in and CT and MJ start talking about how Kate acted a little weird the night before, right? How Kate acted strange. So they start referring to Kate really being pissed off at Phaedra. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I don't remember this from last last week. I don't remember seeing this. So I'm like, show us the tape, like show us the footage. Nothing. They don't talk about it. Then later on, we have more conversations about, wait, Kate was being so weird about, um, like I think Sandra is talking about it. Kate was being so strange. Kate was being so rude. Why did Kate turn on um, Phaedra? No one showed us the footage. I, it's so unlike a Bravo Peacock type show to not roll back tape of seeing what everyone is talking about. I found it really, really odd. I don't know exactly, um, you know, why they didn't do that because I don't remember Kate being so mean to Phaedra. I just think Kate was annoyed with Phaedra because she felt like Phaedra didn't stand up for herself and Kate was going out of her way to protect Phaedra and Phaedra was like, Guys, I'm done. Like she had just been done protecting herself, but we didn't see anything. So that bothered me. So they're starting to get their suspicions up about Kate. They all kind of have conversations. Of course, Trishel is alone with CT here. And then, you know, everyone's kind of doing their little chatting. And it looks to me like people are either going all in on Sandra or all in on Kate. We go to this final mission, which looked like the hardest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay. The hardest thing I've ever seen. And honestly, if they didn't have CT on the show, especially in this last challenge, like they might as well have just gone home. They might as well have just been like, we're not, we're not making any money. Another thing, don't you guys find it interesting that they work their asses off on this show for like $3,000? Go, 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 get it. Okay, you made $2,000. You guys killed yourself today. You jumped out of planes. You swam across oceans. You rappelled down 400 miles and you made $800. Uh, maybe I'm just like a little spoiled from all these other competition shows that we're seeing on all these other networks. Like the challenge, you make a lot more money than that. Um, obviously like Survivor and Big Brother, like you make so much more money. I was really surprised how low the the money was, especially on such a high budget show. I mean, Traders to me feels very high budget, doesn't it? Like with the castle and Alan Cummings and the production value. I mean, it's a beautifully shot show. So anyway, they do this challenge, which seemed incredibly difficult and they only got an hour, but like they had done one thing in 30 minutes. And this made me say, this feels like totally not possible. There's no way that they had 18 minutes to get from like one point way high on a cliff, down the mountain, onto a uh, whatever dinghy or whatever those things are called, to the boat, get on the boat and pull down this huge flag or sail. They're on the dinghy going to the boat and they're like four minutes left. Well, it would have taken four minutes just to get them to the boat. And then another four minutes just getting off the boat. And then another 30 minutes figuring out the dinghy. Like, it all felt so insane. And then also when they got to that final place in the challenge, did you notice like when they got, to, so they're all doing the detours, right? And I'm confused on these detours. Like they do the detours and they have to get this and they have to get that. And then all of a sudden they end up at this, this cliff and they're like, we got to get down there. And literally the most interesting thing I find about the traders just in the way that they shoot the show is that you never see anyone else around. And we all know that there is, I mean, Lance told me yesterday, he's like, there's no way there's not 20 people standing right there around them. Not only do they have all the producers and like directors, et cetera, but then they have all the challenge people who have to make sure they're secured in their, in their ropes, right? This is a huge rope situation. Like they're rappelling down mountains. None of that gets shown. <laughs> like, it's like, we got to get down there. And then like one scene later, they're all in their ropes. It's a little much. Um, you guys all agree that the challenges all go right down to the second, which is true. And I thought to myself, there's no way that they made it exactly in the final second to get that flag up. But of course they needed to show that because you know how much money they spent on that freaking trader sale at the end. 
I would love to really like get the actual truth of how long it took them to shoot that challenge. I'm thinking more like three hours. I don't think that it's, it was one hour, not even close. Um, I love the physical aspect of the challenge, but something like that is almost too much. And it's hard to believe when you see someone like, a, you know, I hate to say it, but some of those women, specifically the women or John, for example, they're just not very physically capable. Um, Michelle says they need challenges that are more like the ones on the trust psychological challenges, challenges, which I really like. And what I would really like to see, and apparently on the UK and Australia virgin, versions, 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 they show a lot more round table, ra- round table discussions. Like I want to see an unedited round table discussion for 30 minutes. I don't want to see one sentence coming out of each person's mouth and then going back and forth twice. You know, they're going and talking for hours, but anyway. Yeah, there's a couple people that definitely are a little bit more lazy than others. Kate being one. Um, Trishel always usually really kicks ass. NCT also does. But most of them don't. Like, let's be honest. They try their hardest, but most of them are just not super physical and they just can't pull it off. Um, Sandra, I'm so confused by Sandra. I am not a survivor watcher. So those of you that are, please, you know, inform me. She clearly is a smart woman because she won two times on Survivor, but she does not portray herself minus that pool table moment where she was showing me the balls. (laughs) She does not portray me to like as someone that is a very, I don't know, intelligent. Like she felt very fly by the seat of her pants type of personality. Like she wasn't really convinced on anything. If someone told her to vote for someone, she's like, yeah, that sounds good. I think I'll do that. I never found that she was like really strong. And maybe that's a an approach, you know, maybe that was her approach on Survivor as well. I don't know. Um, okay, so by the way, Suzanne says, Sandra is queen of Survivor. Her and Boston Robs are my favorites. Did you guys know this new deal or no deal island? Have you seen this on, Pe- is it Peacock? I feel like it's Peacock because I think I saw a trailer last night. Um, deal or no deal island. I tried one episode last Saturday night. I got a little bored. I have to be honest. I love deal or no deal, but this bored me. And Boston Rob is on that. I thought that was so weird. He's like the only reality star that's on that show. Anyway, um, okay, so they get the, you know, they finalize the challenge and in the drive home, and this is where Kate, well, she didn't really screw up, but she kind of screwed up. Kate had a conversation with CT in the car, and Kate basically, her goal is to get the heat off her and get everyone to vote Sandra out. MJ already believes Sandra's a traitor, so really, she just needs Trishel and CT to also vote. Sandra. But right now, Trishel and CT are both assuming it's Kate. Smart, right? So they get to the end, they get to the car and Kate starts going off about how um, most people are gunning for, like how she believes that it's Sandra and she believes that people could be gunning for CT and she's turning it around so that she's making it look like Sandra is the definite traitor and we have to get Sandra out. Then we get over to the house, the castle, and they kind of all start having these conversations. And when they get to the round table, CT, I was in shock, made such a stupid move and believed Kate. I mean, this is stupid if you want the faithfuls to win. If you wanted Kate to win, then this is great for you. But such a stupid move and got into Kate's head and started to believe Kate that Sandra is the traitor. Now, I don't know about you guys, and we know the answer. We know who's a traitor, who's a faithful. But when I'm watching these shows, I feel like I can see right through them. Now, I'm not a detective by any means. But it was so obvious to me Kate was lying and Sandra was telling the truth. Am I? Is it just because we know the answer? I don't know. Did you guys feel the same way? Sandra's like, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Like, I'm a faithful. And sure enough, she got voted out because Trishel went with CT and the rest of the group. She didn't want to go against the group which was smart, right? Because you don't want to be like an outcast. However, Trishel has been the smartest person in this game. It's unreal. Like Trishel has known from day one who everyone is. It's crazy. I I feel like Trishel eats, sleeps, and breathes. She and Janelle remind me of each other a little bit. They're like, they're obsessive over gaming. 
So they probably like play dungeons and oh, there she's a poker player. That's right. She's a poker player. So she probably pay, plays poker like she just is good. So now Sandra is gone. Sandra says, I'm a faithful. Everyone's like, no. We come to the final moment of truth. Each has a conversation, a very brief conversation with Alan coming. We get to this moment of truth, which is a very dramatic fire pit experience. You guys remember the show. If you watched last season with Sari, this is the moment of truth. And everyone kind of goes around and they decide to banish one more time, except Kate. Kate's like, I'm good. Let's get out of the, the game because she would have won it all. Of course, everyone wants to banish one more time. No one's an idiot. They all know Kate's a traitor. They all write her name down. Kate is gone. Okay. This is not, a, not shocking, not... Like no one is shocked by any of this, right? When we're watching the show, I'm like, cool, good, finally. Okay, so now the three of them go home with it. Now, MJ says this even in an interview. I'm so excited. Now I'm like, yeah, let's celebrate. Let's the three of us celebrate and go home. They now have to vote. Do they want to end the game or banish one more? And sure enough, MJ is like, end the game. We're all good. We're all faithful. CT, Trishel, and I were buddies. And Trishel and CT both want to keep going. And MJ's face. <gasps> I mean, the editing was genius. MJ was completely blindsided. And of course, in this moment, I'm like, well, this is a done deal. MJ knows that she's going home because CT and Trishel have known each other for 20 plus years. They've been on MTV since we've watched them on MTV. If you're just like me, like this was a moment that everyone was like, oh my God. Right. So all of us, Lance, me, the kids, we were like, oh, until, and that was the biggest moment until this MJ has to banish one per everyone has to write a name. MJ doesn't want to write a name. She's like, I love you guys. Like, why are we doing this? But she has to choose CT or Trishel. And she chose Trishel. Um, she said it's Sandra's, cho Sandra's choice. Is that what it's called? Who's choice? Sophie's choice. <laughs> it's Sandra's choice. It's Sandra's like, hi, it's Sophie's choice. I have to, I have to vote. Um, I have to vote one of you guys. And I guess I'll vote Trishel. And then CT votes and shocking, not shocking whatsoever, says MJ. Because of course, CT and Trishel have each other's backs forever. And he straight up said, there's no one I trust more in this game. Like, I, I'm sorry, I can't take a chance. I don't know you. I don't, I'm not sure 100% with you, but I trust Trishel. Now in this moment, duh, CT and Trishel are winning the game, right? MJ's gone. So MJ is at this point just completely sure it's happening to her as we all are. And then I wasn't even looking at my TV. I was messaging with someone in the Facebook chat, the live chat about it. Oh, da, da, da. and all of a sudden I look up and Trishel turns MJ. I mean, CT, she turned CT. I'm like, something didn't sound right there. She turned CT. She chose her boy. She chose her buddy her friend, her close, like trusted confidant, the one that she's always trusted from the beginning, the one whose heart, who, who broke her heart when he didn't choose her for the torch. She chose CT. I was floored, screamed. I screamed. Lance was like, what? The kids are like, ah! it was such a moment. Like I loved it. If someone walked by the house, they probably would have thought there was like something dangerous going on the way we were screaming. It was insane. CT and Trishel are now like, <gasps> well, Trishel is very serious, right? She's like, sorry, I had to do it. CT's like, what? His face is like, F you. Now, sure enough, they have to do this again because now they're at a, um, a stalemate or whatever it's called. They have to do it again. MJ decides, you know, oh, they have a moment to kind of talk about like, I guess, plead their case. MJ's like, guys, you know, I'm a faithful, like, I don't know what to tell you. That's, this is hard. And I'm thinking to myself, MJ, like if anything, right now is not the time to like plead your innocence and be like, I love you guys. I don't know who to vote for. Right now's the time to go to CT and be like, she screwed you over. Let's get her out. Why didn't she do that? I thought MJ should have looked at CT and been like, seriously, you're going to choose keeping her in the game when she literally just wanted you out. Choose me. Like, by Trishel, that's what I would have done if I were MJ. But instead, she spent her time like, I love you guys. I don't know who to vote for. I'm like, these people are not your friends. Clearly. 
She's going, she's erasing. I don't know. 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 And she finally decides again to stick with Trishel. I don't know who else to vote for. I already wrote your name down. And sure enough, CT once again goes to MJ. And Trishel also goes to MJ. And that is it. So now CT and Trishel, buddies from the beginning, challenge friends, real world friends, they have decided to eliminate MJ, banish her at the last effing second of this game. And the pot was, I think they each made like 104,000. So just say like 208,000. So instead of 104, they would have each made like 60 something thousand dollars. It was, listen, I'm going to be 100% entirely honest. Like MJ was really entertaining on this season. I'm not a huge MJ fan, like in general. Like I'm not someone that feels like she's the best TV. She's, she, I, I struggle a little bit with that energy, but this sucked. Like she was too trusting and she believed that these two would have her back at the end. And at the end of the day, CT and Trishel are gamers, number one, First and foremost, they are there for the money. They are not there, as Larsa said later, for the TV time. They are not there um, for, you know, anything. Like, that is that. That is that. Like, she got screwed. She got so entirely screwed. And she's clearly still very upset about it. Now, remember, they shot the show in November? They shot the show when Shannon, like, tri uh, the only reason I think it's November is because it was the time, you, you guys tell me, Shannon Bedore got her DUI on the same day or the day before Tamara had to go to Scotland to film. So I want to say that was like November, beginning of November. So they just shot the reunion. We saw them all talk about it right after the Super Bowl, like a week or two after the Super Bowl. So. We're three months later and MJ is clearly still very upset. Oh, September. Okay. Now, here's my thought. CT and Trishel were so cute. They were so excited. They were so great. I don't love Trishel. She's always kind of bugged on those shows. CT can do no wrong. I am a CT stan through and through. I would get his name tattooed on me. Like anyone that knows me knows my obsession with CT since 2003. I love him. Love CT. So I'm so happy CT won. I'm also really happy for CT that he gets like this new found fame from the Bravo world. Like how many of us Housewives fans are now going to be, you know, all over CT? I think it's so cute. Um, I think that, you know, Trishel deserved to win. She kicked ass. She played really well and she was really, really strong. MJ floated. You know, she never really got thrown under the bus. She never had to fight for her life. Um... She was smart, but she always went the wrong way in the in the ceremonies. I don't think MJ really deserved it nearly as much as CT and Trishel, but to make it to that final three and then feel like you're kind of like pushed out of the crew because you're not part of those two, that part sucks. I'm sure you guys agree with that. That part sucks. Anyway, um, the reunion was great because, of course, it was Andy Cohen, and I'm so happy Andy Cohen did it. And when you watch Andy Cohen do reunions, you realize so easily how much the host of a reunion makes a difference, like compared to the Nick Lachey, Vanessa situation. Um, thank God they pre-recorded that. Remember last time when they did a live Love is Blind reunion and we were all sitting next to our TVs on a Sunday night, like uh, 30 minutes late, 90 minutes late. Oh, it's not on until tomorrow? So, um, but Andy Cohen does a great job hosting reunion. I love that you just, he basically just takes questions from the audience the entire time. He asks people on Twitter always, and then people write in. He says like, Travis from Los Angeles asks. I mean, he does this for all of his Housewives reunions. He does a great reunion. Everyone looked phenomenal. Um, my favorite, I loved Peppermint's speech about, you know, the importance of representing trans people on TV and, you know, wishing that there was more of an opportunity to really showcase. But being such a Traders fan, I loved Peppermint. Um, bananas was so mad still at Dan. I don't know why Dan gets such a brunt, like the brunt of anger. Obviously he kind of screwed a lot of people over in this game being who he is on the show, Dan, the original trader, but it's a freaking game. Like that's what you do. You can't play these games and just like only be agreeable to everyone and make everyone like everyone. Um, 
Oh my God, Mark. <laughs> Everyone's saying LOL, Mark, in the in the comments. So I had to look. He says, I heard this is just a comment and it's not real. I heard that Andy made all of the faithfuls and the traders do coke, allegedly. LOL. I heard he only asked the traders to do it and not the faithfuls. Just saying. So, um, okay. So it is a game and it's so interesting because we started to really quickly realize that like, I love Phaedra, but she took it so personally with Dan. She was so mad at Dan. And I get it because Dan really put her name on the map. I don't know if not for Dan, would Phaedra's name come up three, four weeks in a row and then eventually get eliminated? I don't know. Um, MJ. MJ treated this like a Housewives reunion or a Shaws of Sunset reunion. She was so mad at CT and Trishel still. She blocked CT and Trishel. This is giving immature. Just saying. She blocked. CT and Trishel on Instagram before she even like, before this, like right when she got home to LA, like right when she got her phone back, she blocked. I'm like, that is a little bit ridiculous. Like, I felt like it was a little bit over overkill. It's a game. And they ended up saying that, that the gamers, you know, like I loved what Janelle said, Janelle from Big Brother. She's like, I don't take any of this shit personally. Like you guys piss me off in there, but I'm, I love every single one of you. Like I'm not mad at all. That's the way it should be. I kind of feel bad for Dan that he like, Phaedra was not letting him off the hook. And I felt bad for um, CT and Trishel that MJ was still so angry and it was giving a little bit like, calm it down, calm it down. And honestly, like I know it's a lot of money, but had MJ won the final and she made $60,000 after taxes, it would have been like 30 some thousand dollars. Like, I think MJ will be okay. I mean, it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like we're talking about a million dollars here. I get it. You do feel a little bit slighted by friends, um, but it did feel very personal. And then of course, as Patrice says, John came in. It's a game. It's a game. End of. End of. John had a thing to say about everyone. And I was shocked how much camera time he got because there's so much editing you could do. Now, meanwhile, Marsa, Marsa, we should be calling them Marsa or Larkus, Marcus and Larsa Pippen. Marcus Jordan, Larsa Pippen were there. Um, I can't stand them anymore. You guys, I went, I go back and forth, but like after watching last night's uh, Miami reunion, which I'm about to talk about, they drove me insane. They drove me insane. Just saying, insane. Um, Marcus is thirsty, in my opinion. Larsa is, she bugs. I liked her on the traders, though. I have to say, when she was on the traders, and maybe that's because she wasn't all glammed up as much. I just want to see normal. She just feels like so fake, like really fake. Um, Andy asked them about their breakup because I think this was shot like a week or two after that Super Bowl breakup. And Marcus said, um, we just went through some bumpy times and we're just working it all out. Okay. That makes so much sense to unfollow and block each other on Instagram. Like, who are you, MJ? It's giving a little immature. Marcus is, is not adding much to anything. He did talk a lot during Miami. Let's get into Miami. Of course, Trader season three is, they're casting right now from what I hear. And they're definitely coming back. Uh, I want to see on season three. I, I've already said I want Jeff Lewis, but I know Jeff Lewis will never do it. He said, you have to go away for too long. Um, I think Monica Garcia needs to be on Traders. I would love to see, uh, oh my God, like how good would, I'm just thinking of um, Salt Lake City. How good would Lisa Barlow be on Traders? You guys, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And I don't want to get banished. Who else could we put on there from the salt from Real Housewives? You guys would kill kill us if, if Vicky got on there. I mean, ah, I don't want to do this. Ah. Can you imagine Vicky during the um, challenge with the insects falling all over yourself? Oh my gosh! Um, Jessica says I noticed Trishel turned off her comments on IG. I wonder if she was getting hate for what happened at the end with the end with MJ. You know what I did notice yesterday, and I didn't know this. But I noticed on so many, because so many Bravo accounts that I follow um, never talk about the challenge. But of course, they're talking about CT and Trishel, and they're talking about all these shows because of, because of traders. And they mentioned something yesterday, and I noticed like the comments were overwhelmingly angry with Trishel. They call her Trishel. Like they don't like Trishel, and I'm confused on that. I find her a little bit, like I found her a little, honestly, a little annoying, like when she was 
pleading for her safety in every episode. Like, I need the shield. I'm going to lose. I Please get me. I can't. I can't. Like, it was giving a little bit desperado. That part drove me crazy a little bit. But other than that, we can admit she played the game pretty well. But yeah, I mean, listen, I can tell you right now, the comments are so hurtful and they're so hard to deal with. And when you see people online just like tearing you apart, it does definitely kind of um, ruin a good experience. And um, and so she's smart for turning off the comments if she was getting a lot of hate. Erica Jane would definitely be good. Ooh, on the traders, Erica. I'm a trader. Um, Dorit. Dorit, not only would she be good, but she would, I would enjoy seeing her compete with Alan for wardrobe attention. Knock, knock. Is this breakfast? Ah, this is wonderful, PK. Okay. Okay, let's keep it going. <laughs> Renee says Sutton would be, I mean, Wanda said Sutton would be great. Name them, name them, name them, name them. <laughs> she should be Alan Cummings. Name the traitor. Aw, thank you so much. Okay, let's keep it going. Um, Miami. All I'll tell you about this is that it started off a little too intense. We're we're coming in right after, you know, Gertie and Larsa are going back and forth. And we're still in this conversation at the beginning of the episode. And I'm like, enough. And honestly, Gertie was getting way too upset, I think. Given everything that she's going through in her life, she should... In my opinion, I feel like she should just be like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not into this fighting crazy shit, but she's going in on Larsa. She can't stand Larsa. I get it. I can't really either, but like she's, you know, the, it was just constant. It just felt like so intense. Larsa's like, I've said, sorry, Gertie's, Gertie's like, it's not enough. Anytime it was giving a little bit of, you know, just like constant anger. I don't know. I didn't like that. I wanted Gertie to just like rise above. Not crazy huge things happened in this episode. Of course, Alexia, you know, had to go through and name why everyone is a liar or not a liar, which was crazy to see. Um, this one's a liar. This one's not a liar. This one's a liar. No, she's not a liar. Mary Saul can't remember anything, which ended up being drama between her and Mary Saul. I want to see Mary Saul and Alexia go into the next season as complete rivals. I think that would make an amazing show. Another important thing is Kiki. Kiki, if she doesn't get a freaking mojito for next season, we are rioting. We are done with the show. Kiki Bart Barth has 100% deserved her mojito and then some. She's honest. She's vulnerable. She's funny. She's entertaining. She's beautiful. She has a real story. And I love that she's like, I'm in a two-bedroom apartment. Do you or a two bedroom house? Like I have nothing compared to what you guys have. She also talked a lot about her childhood. She got very emotional. I love Kiki. Okay. And then also another thing that I thought was really strange timing is Kiki's like, I don't have what you guys have. I'm in a two bedroom house. I don't like, I feel uncomfortable about a lot of that. You know, when I threw that party, remember how everyone just like decided not to go with her to her fashion week party. I just wanted to throw that party and you guys didn't come. And, you know, I, I was really excited because I never invite you guys to things of mine. Not two seconds after that, Andy Cohen and, and the producers throw a package about like the extravagance of Miami. Did you notice that? Did anyone else feel a little bit of a, a, like a, wow, the timing here is a little crazy. Kiki's like, I don't really have anything. I'm in a two bedroom apartment. I sleep with my daughter in my bed. Andy's like, roll the tape of, of Miami. We're seeing the $10 million house and the $30 million condo and the, this and the, that, and, and the extravagance, the boat that I was like, oh, I shouldn't have like thrown that into Kiki's face. It bothered me a little bit. Um, obviously, yes, Miami is insane. It looks crazy expensive. I personally am not a huge Miami fan. The, I've been there three times and it's never, you know how you go to cities and you're like, this is my city. I've never felt that in Miami, but maybe I haven't done it right. If you guys are in Miami and you want to meet out and you're going to show me like Miami, you know, Donna Bowling style, let me know. Um, Lisa, you know, we had the Lisa and Kiki back and forth. They definitely got a little bit heated again. Lisa did apologize for a few things she said. She really, like, Lisa's a toughie. Again, she's getting emotional. This was the hardest day of my life. It's like, enough with the Lenny. Enough. 
Um, but hopefully she and Kiki end up working it out. Of course, they talked about the dog, the feeding the dogs incident on the gondola. Um, and how she kept throwing it back into Kiki's face. Oh, are you going to throw something at me? Oh, are you going to fight me? Oh, are you going to say something? And that's why it got so heated in that, that dinner. Um, okay. Let me think what else. Um, I'm confused a little bit on the Marcus thing. We had seen so much in the press that Marcus gets heavily involved in the reunion and he gets like really in the drama and like a lot of women, you know, deserve apologies for it. Really? Did anyone else feel like we didn't see that crazy? I mean, he he said the comment like those women can't even wash dishes in my house or something like that. He's just being protective of his girl, but I didn't feel like he was over the top being crazy about, I thought he was going to like lose his shit or come on stage or do something insane. By the way, the guy was dying for camera time. He's in the backstage, he's in the dressing room and he's like, I would do anything to be on that couch right now. And then right at the break, he was the first person out hugging Larsa. It's like, chill out. But I thought it was a little interesting that like the press made it sound like he was a heavily you know, a really, really involved part of this reunion. I didn't feel like that. Um, Julia, we talked about Julia and her wanting to adopt another baby. Sweet story. Um, and her guava jam for $30, which is crazy. Nothing. It wasn't like the biggest, biggest episode. I don't think anything like really groundbreaking happened. Um, at the end, of course, Julia's opera duet guy starts playing and singing Ave Marie. And Julia just like stands up and then starts singing. And then they start doing like this like remix, you know, with a, like a club version of Ave Maria. Felt a little awkward to watch if, if you want to know my honest feelings. Marisol was not happy with it. And then the end, you see Marisol and Alexia going at it. And then that was over. So I didn't think it was that incredible. Um, my final thoughts about Miami in terms of cast them, throw them away, not throw them away, but like recast, keep them. This is what I feel. I'm going around the couch. Adriana, she's messy. She has to be there. I want her to stay a friend of. Nicole, obviously keep her. I just want to watch her 24 seven. I want to see her life. Um, Lisa, I would be so down if she was gone. Larsa, she drives me crazy, but she does drive story. Gertie obsessed, of course. Alexia, she drives me crazy, but you need her. Um, Julia, listen, I'm going to be 100% honest. She's sweet. She's adorable. She could be a friend of, in my opinion. And Kiki should get that that uh, mojito. Kiki should be the definite main and Marisol can stay friend of. I truly think Julia, Marisol, and Adriana could be friends of and the show would continue just fine. But it's a beautiful, beautiful uh cast and they're just like, it was a great, it was a great season. Great season. All right. Going on to my final show to talk about summer house. Are you guys like me? Are you into summer house? I am feeling it so hard. I am like obsessed with this show. I truly look forward to watching it. I want to watch it. I am dying to see how this kind of all comes out. I love watching these kids in their prime. I say kids, Kyle's my age, but I love watching these people in their prime, just like partying it up, having fun, dating, hooking up, pool time, you know, rose time, cooking. Like I'm in it. I love Summer House. It brings me joy. It's never going to be that dark, it's never going to be that intense. I mean, maybe it will be, but I love it. So, of course, we see the the kind of um, fallout from Carl and Lindsay's fight when the, Carl wakes up. Now, obviously, I think out of uh, all of us sitting here, I think 100% of us can recognize that Lindsay was in the wrong. And so does Kyle. Kyle Cook ends up having a conversation, a great conversation with Carl, where he's like, listen, like, I'm used to Lindsay not taking accountability, but you're the one that has to live with her. And she is, and Carl... Carl was really interesting to me in this episode because he is really wanting this to work. Does anyone else feel that way? Like, I do feel like he really, truly wants this to work out. So he is swallowing a lot of his wanting to say things and wanting to like, you know, just like attack Lindsay over everything she says that drives him crazy. And I feel like he's just like the keeper of peace with her. Like he just needs to manage her. 
because he doesn't want to activate her too much. Because we all know a Lindsay activated, which happens when she drinks, which is why it's the most insane thing that they're together and he's sober and she drinks. Because we've seen them together last summer when he was sober and Lindsay stayed primarily sober for him. But now in this new season, Lindsay's drinking. Like she comes to the house and she starts drinking and she's getting drunk. We're seeing it over and over again. And it's got to be a weird dynamic. Now, he sits there and he's trying to kind of almost like give her credit to Kyle. And Kyle's like, there's nothing, like, no, this is 100% her bad. You, like, please don't try to like make up for this. This is her bad. So I thought that was a really interesting um, conversation. Poor Carl has to like come in and now start to deal with Lindsay. And Lindsay's kind of playing, giving him the cold shoulder. She's just kind of going through the morning. They all get ready to go to the beach. Notice they're all taking jello shots. It's morning, Lindsay included. They get to the beach. They start all like unpacking um, and playing and hanging out and doing football, whatever. And everyone's having a good time. Everyone's enjoying themselves. And because Lindsay doesn't really have anyone at this point, she's now going back to Danielle. It's so obvious, right? And Danielle is the perfect person. For Lindsay to do this too, because we've now seen Danielle in this case in so many ways. Danielle will take everyone's shit. Like people will treat Danielle like shit and she'll just accept it. It's the craziest thing. So she's sitting there and she's talking to Lindsay and they're talking about like Lindsay's talking shit about Carl. It's very clear. And she's frustrated with Carl's work environment. And honestly, I have to be honest. This is one thing I will be team Lindsay on for the rest of my life. Like I would never and cannot be in a relationship or married to someone, a man specifically, but anyone. I've talked about this with Lindsay, with uh, Kyle and, and Amanda, who doesn't have drive, who doesn't have determination, who doesn't have a strong work ethic, who doesn't want to go out there and succeed. I'm not saying you have to be rich. I married Lance literally with nothing. Like this is not at all what the situation is. It's more about the want, the ambition, the drive, the determination, and also knowing what you want in life. And if you don't know what you want in life, go to betterhelp.com slash Donna because therapy can help you with this. And apparently we just found out last night that Carl is kind of like taking this year off to figure shit out. We know now that he's back at Loverboy, but he's great at sales and he was working for Loverboy. And then he decided to stop doing that for whatever reason, maybe because he felt weird promoting alcohol when he's sober. And then he's like, I'm taking a year off to figure it out. I'm not sure sales is a thing for me. Well, that's cool that you can do that. But most women don't want to be with a guy who just wants to take a year off. Lindsay is like, I have leaned really strongly into the influencer life. I'm making really good money. And, you know, he's got to like meet me there. I get it, you guys. And it's one thing if you're doing a startup and you're really trying to make money and you're not there, but you're working your ass off and you're really passionate about it. I've got your back. I will sit there and work with you like... When I met Lance, Lance was, I'm like Lenny and Lisa. When I met Lance, Lance was just starting his career in the camera world and, you know, starting his production company and starting his everything. And like, I was there supporting him a little bit financially at the very beginning when I needed to, but also just like mentally and emotionally. And I was cool with him working crazy hours and whatever, because you see that there's like, the, there's a plan, right? And it sounds to me, Carl has no plan. She's like $20,000 on a, on a career coach gone. Okay. This gone. Like he has spent so much time and energy trying to find the. I'm sorry, you guys, this is grounds for separation for me. It's like, I get Lindsay's annoyance about this now. Um, we go over to the, uh, well, so Lindsay and, and Danielle are having like a kumbaya conversation about the wedding, whatever. And finally Carl, Carl says to Lindsay, can I talk to you? He goes over and Carl, I noticed, like, Lindsay should have been very apologetic in this moment. Like, Lindsay should have said, I don't know why I, I, I thought you were being so mean to me yesterday. And Carl should have said, I'm really sorry. And he did already in the morning. I'm really sorry that you felt that way. But Lindsay should have said, I cannot believe I said that out loud, that I think you're not sober. I cannot believe that. I'm so sorry. I feel so bad. Lindsay, like, can't say I'm sorry, right? So Carl's like, I love you. I love you so much. I'm just going to say one thing really fast. This is going to be unpopular, okay? I cannot imagine making out with Carl. 
I just can't. There's something about him. Did you guys notice he has Mauricio's teeth now? He has Mauricio's chompers. There's something about him that is so unsexy to me. And I feel bad saying that because he seems like a nice guy. I'm just so confused about like the physical side and the physical connection. Maybe you guys think he's hot. That's the nice thing about this. We're allowed to have crushes on different people. Give me car, uh, give me uh, Craig and CT. I get it. Now, he apologizes to her, of course. They finally decide, let's have a nice time. She kisses him and he's like, ooh, tongue. I'm like, ooh. ooh. Now, Paige has an interesting conversation about Jesse Sullivan, who's hitting on her. And Craig, you know Craig freaking Conover was sitting in his his house in Charleston last night, like just so giddy over the scene because Paige is like, that's my man. He would be pissed if he saw this guy flirting with me. And also, by the way, if a girl simply touched his leg, I would be on the next flight to Charleston. Oh, Craig got so turned on by that conversation. I thought it was adorable. I really am into Paige this season, like highly into Paige. Like maybe I'm turning Kyle Richards, Morgan Wade into Paige. She's so freaking cute. Um, We come back to the house. Everyone's, you know, continuing to drink, get ready. And half the, this is so weird. Half the house decides to go out. Half the house decides to stay home. And how they chose who went out was so weird. I can't imagine why Carl was like, I want to go out while Lindsay and Kyle stay home really weird. It was very much, it felt very produced. Like let's separate some of the couples so we can all talk about it. Um, so like Lindsay would have never stayed home and chosen to stay home with Paige and Kyle. It just, that felt weird to me. Um, but it was actually really good because Paige and, and Lindsay had a great conversation and everyone had fun and, and Carl also had fun and Amanda, everyone like enjoyed themselves. West and Sierra are obviously building a new relationship. And I really like West. I don't think they're together in real life now, but I wish they were because they're so damn cute together. By the way, another thing, last season, I couldn't stand Sierra. Couldn't stand her. This season, loving her. Paige and Sierra have really come to play this season. I loved it. I loved it. Now we finally, um, you know, they go out, they have another fun, crazy party night. I was like Paige. I was like, I'm not at the beach all day drinking in my pajamas and then going back out. I have, I was in shock they did that. And Lindsay gets again hammered. She's sitting there with Carl as he's helping her take off her shoes. And she's like, I had a like totally hammered. Um, the second Kyle goes out to meet Amanda, Amanda comes home. Did you notice that? It's the craziest thing. Amanda's got a tracker on Kyle and like it, it, it like alerts her when he's within 10 miles. She's like, gotta go. <laughs> It's like the opposite of some sort of love addiction. She's like love, you know, denial. They finally, the next day, or no, we finally go back home and to New York, we see Sierra, Sierra and West on their date. Very cute. Love them. And then we end up seeing this, this awkward, incredibly awkward conversation between Carl, Carl and Lindsay. Carl brings Lindsay to this sober like tonic bar, it felt like. They did mocktails. They do a lot of like elixirs and tonics. There's a bunch of things like that here in Los Angeles. Lindsay's acting like everything's fine and having fun, but immediately Carl's like, you know, I really wanted you to come here because I really wanted to talk to you about something. Lindsay's like, "Uh uh-huh. He's like, so I'm thinking about opening a non-alcoholic sports bar. Now in this moment, I was Lindsay. That's a no. It's a no for me, dog. I want to know from you guys. If your spouse, friend, brother, that didn't have multi, multi, multi millions of dollars that they could just throw away at like failed businesses, told you that they want to open a non-alcoholic sports bar. Are you coming? Are you telling me? Like you're telling me you're supporting that? No, I am not in any way against sober living, against alcohol-free restaurants, bars, whatever. Sports bars are primarily, I think, crowded because people want to go and watch the games with other people and drink. I just can't imagine the vibe at a sober sports bar. You can go to a bar and just order a lemonade. And if it's too hard for you to go to a bar, like just watch the game at home. Very confused by this. Also, alcohol is why things are expensive. Alcohol is why people make money at these bars. 
So you're just going to go and like serve lemonade for $4 and you're expecting to make a profit. Lindsay puts the kibosh on that right away. I felt bad for Carl a little bit, but Carl, like get your shit together, get your shit together. And I have no doubt that now that Lindsay is out of his life and he's ended and ended things with her, I have no doubt that his life will be better for it too. That's my honest feeling. I think this was the best thing for both of them. They clearly are not good together. And I still can't imagine making out with him. I absolutely loved this week on Daily Dose of Donna. You guys killed it. Thank you so much for being here, supporting the show. Make sure to go to Patreon. Um, the link is below in the show notes and you can join the YouTube uh, for Patreon only. And we will talk on Monday. I hope you have an incredible weekend. Happy Friday. Dosers, talk to you guys later.